find the resultant of the following forces. As you can see, there are three forces given. To give every force an angle, which specifies the direction, and a magnitude, which specifies the length of the vector, is given. I am going to use the method of components to add these vectors. In the method of components, we convert vectors into its components and instead of adding the vectors themselves we add the components and then we construct the resultant from the answer. Now it is important to note that there are different ways of giving the direction of a vector. In some cases, the angle is measured from the positive x direction. For example, the magnitude is f and the angle is t, or the angle is theta, let's say in the second quadrant, and the magnitude is f, or for example, the theta is in the fourth quadrant and the magnitude is f. If the angle is measured from the positive x direction, in all cases you can safely write f x, which is the x component of f, is equal to the magnitude of the vector f times cosine of theta. And you can say f of y is f sine theta. These equations are correct only if we measure angles from the positive x direction, such as shown in these graphs. Now, there are cases where the angle is not measured from the positive x direction. For example, this situation. And the magnitude is f. If we draw the components, so the y component is this, and the x component is this, and use the properties of trig ratios, we see that f of x, in this case, is f sine theta. However, if we use the angle, which is measured from the positive x direction, then f of x would be f cos theta. To get things more complicated, Let's consider this situation where we're given with, let's say, this angle, which is measured from the negative x direction. Again, if we draw the components and we calculate the x and y components, we see that we have to add a negative for the x component by hand. So. I would have minus f cos theta. The reason I need to add this minus is that theta is an acute angle and it cannot generate the necessary negative which should appear in the equation because the x component is towards the negative x direction. It, ha it happens very often that you would not be given with theta measured from the positive x direction. Therefore, you have to be able to handle all of the possibilities. Now, let's go back to our problem. We have these forces. 15 Newton, 120 degrees from the positive x-axis. 18 Newton, 
in the negative y direction and then 19 Newton and the angle is measured from the negative y direction to be 58 degrees. Let's call these forces by names. I'm going to call this force F1, this force F2, and the last one F3. Because we're measuring the angle for force F1 from the positive x direction, we can write the x component of F1 is 15 cos 120 and that becomes minus 7.5 if I keep one decimal point. F1 of y is 15 sine 120 degrees and that is 13 all in Newton. I did not have to worry about the negatives for example this one because I am measuring the angle from the positive x direction. If I were measuring the angle let's say from the positive y direction this angle is obviously 30 degrees and if I wanted to calculate the components using this angle I would have F1x now I have to draw the components and I would have to consider the negative or positive sign that I would have to in insert by hand. I would get minus 15 sine 30 degrees and if I use a calculator once again I get minus 7.5 Newton pay attention that this minus was inserted by hand while in the previous case it was not necessary to insert the minus by hand F1Y becomes 15 cos 30 degrees and that is 13 Newton to calculate the components of F2 we can either use the angle 27, 270 degrees this angle or we can just look at the diagram and see the components in this case by looking at the diagram we can see that there is no x component and the y component is minus 18 Newton we could also have used the angle 270 and write F2x is 18 cos 270 and F2y is 18 sine 270 degrees. In both cases we would get the same answer. For the third force we have the third component the x component of F3 is 19 sine 58 and because it is in the positive x direction the x component I do not add a negative sign I actually keep the positive sign and this becomes 16.1 Newton for the y component of F3 I have to insert a minus by hand because the y component is in the negative y direction minus 19 cos 58 degrees which becomes minus 10.1 Newton. Now let's add the components. The x component of the resultant is the x component of F1 plus the x component of F2 and the x component of F3. If we add these components we find Rx to be 8.6 Newtons. Ry or the y component of the resultant would be F1y plus F2y plus F3y which is equal to minus 15.1 Newton. In order to find the resultant it is always necessary to properly have an understanding of in which quadrant the vector falls.
the x component is 8.6 and the y component is minus 15.1 therefore the vector falls in the fourth quadrant the magnitude of the resultant using Pythagorean theorem squared is equal to 8.6 squared plus minus 15.1 squared and this gives us R to be 17.4 newtons the tangent of theta is minus 15.1 divided by 8.6 this gives the tan data to be minus 60.3 degrees and that is this angle therefore the resultant vector is of length or magnitude of 17.4 newtons and it makes an angle of 60 point three degrees as shown in the figure if we did not want to find the components of every single vector individually and show each one individually we could have written the whole solution in a more compact way let's look at the original forces that we started with there is a force of 18 newtons acting downward there is a force of 15 newtons making an angle of 120 degrees with the positive x-axis and there is a force of magnitude 19 Newton making an angle of 58 degrees with the negative y-axis and let's say we are interested in finding the resultant of these forces this is a compact way of finding the resultant we would calculate Rx in one shot of the three forces that we're dealing with only two of them this one and this one have X component the 19 Newton force has a positive contribution in the X direction the magnitude would be 19 sine 58 degrees the 15 Newton force has a contribution in the negative x direction therefore we could write its contribution as negative 15 sine 30 degrees for our y we have negative 18 newtons coming from this force the 15 newton force also has a contribution it is 15 cosine of 30 degrees and it is in the positive direction and then the 19 newton force also has a contribution in the y direction which is in the negative y direction and it is 19 cosine of 58 degrees we can put these expressions into the calculator find rx and ry to get what we found earlier and then find the resultant by combining the components to get the original vector